Now, sometimes stress can come from a psychological construct, which we call conflict. I don't want to have that stress, not from conflict or anything else. However, we got to know what it is conflict. And what do we mean when we call it in a psychological concept of conflict? I mean, we think of conflict of something, you know, like two people banging heads together. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. What conflict when we're talking about is when we have to make a decision and there's more than one decision that can be made. Let's say we have to make a decision. You got to decide uh, whether or not you want to go to a party or meet a friend. Now, friends in for, for one day came in from California to New Jersey. It's a really important party, big one, one, one chance in a lifetime that you can go to. And they can't go to both, you know, one or the other. That's a conflict. What are you going to do? That type of conflict is called approach, approach. Two things you'd like to do, but you've got to decide what to do. That's a conflict. Not all conflicts are two things you want to choose. We don't, not all, don't always get that lucky. Sometimes it's two things you don't want to do. Okay, like for instance, um, they've got bad consequences. You don't want to um, go to the dentist, because if you don't want to go to the dentist, that way you don't want to avoid, you want to avoid the pain of going to the dentist. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. I had some dental work done not too long ago. Boy, was that something I wanted to avoid. Okay. But on the other hand, I also wanted to avoid the problems of having pain in my teeth. That would be a real problem. Wow, well, which is more of a problem? Right? Well, that's a conflict. And at some point, that conflict is difficult to decide, and that's called an avoidance-avoidance conflict. As against two things that you want, it's two things that you don't want. Okay? Avoidance-avoidance conflict. Take some more. Now, there's a third type, right? It's an approach avoidance conflict, okay? So in other words, it's the same goal that applies both approach and avoidance, right? Pluses and minuses, good points and bad points, all at the same time. Um, a same, the, the same thing which you can't figure out whether you want to do. I want to go to the movies. I want to take the night out in the town. I want to have a good time, right? Approach. But I don't want to do that because I got a really important project to finish and I must get it done tonight. And I want to avoid that. So I want to go, if I can go and enjoy myself, but if I go, there'll be consequences. So that would be the third type is called the approach avoidance. Now, the truth of the matter is you can have multiple types, this, that, and the other, all you know, together, decision making would happen to be something with an all uh, you know more complex. But those are the basic things, and then you can make uh, connections between them. The next concept that we have to address in the subject of conflict is how to cope with conflict. How does pe how do people actually deal with the conflict? Now, an interesting way of looking at it is that people might have styles of coping. In other words, it might be a personality factor. This is the way they do it, right? This is, you know, the guy who's always dealing with the conflict in the same manner. I don't really believe that that's the way it works, but it's good for the science to understand that there might be coping patterns. And research has come up back in the 1980s already, uh, there was come up with five five different types of 
coping patterns. Now, what are those five different kinds of things? The first one is avoidance. Now, I'm sure you actually have understood, you've seen this, you know about it. You got a conflict? Leave me out of it. You know, let the, I don't care what happens. Just, I am not going anywhere near that. I'm not interested in any conflict at all. What they can do, they can do. If it's going to happen to me, I don't, in, not interested. Avoidance, number one, avoidance, right? Keep me out of it. The second possibility is accommodation. It's also a type like avoidance, but you know what? I'll take it. Whatever you just say, that's fine with me. I'm I'm okay with anything. Anything you say will be fine. Accommodation. You can, I will accommodate anybody, right? Anything to make the disagreement go away. I'm not interested in any conflict. It's not. I won't ignore you, but I will give in. That's fine. A little sheep, right? Some people say, no, not me. Not me. I'm going to get my way. You know that. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Domination. The third way, number three, let me get that into that. The third way is domination. To dominate the situation, right? Any length to win. I'm going to get my way. That's it. Right? That's number three. Number four, number four is compromise. Right? You give in a little, I'll give in a little, we'll meet somewhere in the middle. Compromise works, right? Well, it's certainly better than the first three. It certainly is better than, you know, uh, ignoring it, giving in completely. Or dominating, so we'll do it with compromise. Now, it's not always the best solution because people come out frustrated, people come out not happy, they've given in too much, right? Or well, doesn't always work out. The fifth way is integration. Now, compromise is good, but the best way is integration, right? We'll take some of yours, take some of mine. We'll put all the solutions together. We'll get them both done. Win-win solutions. And that, of course, is always the best way of dealing with any sort of conflict. If you can get to the point where you're integrating so everybody wins, everybody feels that they come out ahead. That's not compromise. Because compromise means we're giving, I'm, I'm giving up on certain aspects. Other ones, it's not that way.